how do we create internal conflict? That's the big question. And I've found that the most basic way to look at internal conflict is just, it's simply the clash of a character's desire with their fear. My boy is to be married. Who is it to be? <laughs> Elizabeth. It's something they want and something that's holding them back. And that's what creates this push-pull tug of war internally and creates conflict. Today we're going to talk about how to write a banger opening hook for your story. So the first page, the first chapter, the first encounter that your reader has with your story. I think a lot of writers like freeze up yeah. when you first open that first page and you're like, okay, I have to write this amazing first page that's gonna right. grab my reader's attention, pull them in, make them want more, make them stay up past their bedtime reading. It's a tall order. It's it's a lot to expect from yourself. So we're going to take kind of a different approach to it today and break it down into like the most important aspects of an opening hook. What makes the most powerful, captivating, emotionally spellbinding hook? So first things first, I think you guys probably know what I'm going to say first <laughs> if you've been around here at all or been on my channel at all. And that is the number one most important thing to the hook. The most important ingredient is internal conflict. In fact, I would go as far as to say that internal conflict is the hook. It mm. is that thing that pulls you in and makes you care. Right. Like if you don't have that, <laughs> you don't have a compelling hook that will actually like capture a total stranger's attention and, and pull them into your story. It's really amazing to me when I, when I study stories and read books and watch films, how the simple presence of a clear goal can pull you through a story almost single-handedly. Yeah. I'm going to circumnavigate the globe in 80 days. <laughs> uh, I want to see the floating lights. Wish I could be part of that world. Somehow I will impress them. I will be firm but kind. If I'm to make a name for myself, I need as much experience of crime scenes as possible. Fight me or die on your knees! When your characters don't have a goal and they seem kind of aimless, it won't hold your reader's attention as much as if your characters have a goal. They have something they're pursuing. In fact, I would I would um, recommend like going out and studying some of your favorite movies and TV shows and books and looking for this one aspect. Is there a clear goal from the outset of the story? Is there a clear desire or a want, something that this character is pursuing? Because I think you'll find, I think you'll be surprised by how often you find this pattern. Um, and of course we have the opposite side of that conflict, which is the fear that's holding the person back from achieving their goal. And sometimes it, the fear is masked by external obstacles. You know, it's, it is something that's actually deeply rooted in them, but they might even be blaming it on something else, something that's external. Like, I can't get that because of this. You're all dismissed. Bankrupt. Better luck with your next job. Love her as I would were I here, and ensure that she is in receipt of all that is due to her as a child of mine. Do you have in mind my position? That is simply impossible. What is right can never be impossible. It's 1872. Would your readership really suffer a mass coronary if they discovered a woman had written this? No, Abigail, this is neither the time nor the place. And that's something that I think can help reveal some of the problems that the character is dealing with, but ultimately it's going to be internal. You know, ultimately it's gonna be something in their character that they're wrestling with, not just an external obstacle that's standing in their way. Right. It's always like, it's rooted in the internal conflict. Yeah. That's what's dictating how they behave externally. Like you can think of it also in terms of your own life. Think about maybe an event or something that you experienced once where maybe you wanted to try something new, for an example, but you 
were hesitant to do it for some reason. So you, on one hand, you really wanna do this thing. I know I can think of a bunch of instances for me, like, oh, I'd love to do that, but I'm kind of nervous about doing it and it's I'm kind of being held back by these fears or hesitancies or because I'm afraid this might happen if I do that. Right. And so even if it's not a big thing, it could be a really simple instance, but you can see how that works, how that's constructed, is you, you know what you want, but you have a fear or hesitancy holding you back from doing that thing. So the number one question I think to ask yourself at this point is like, what what is my character's basic desire and basic fear? And how can I kind of take those basic desires and fears and like dig down to the root? And you might not explore the root right out of the gate. It's okay if you wait a little while before really digging into the character's deeper psyche, but having a clear goal is really, really important to reflect upon what the character is struggling with on a deeper level. Bucky, come on, there are men laying down their lives. I got no right to do any less than them. That's what you don't understand. She'll be back. Sooner or later, she'll tire of your life, of having nothing. I'm surprised you haven't changed the name to your own. Miss above the door. That would be a sure way never to have any clients. How does the inciting incident threaten their desires and fuel their fears? That's another thing to sort of start to think about with your hook, because even though we haven't arrived at the inciting incident on page one, usually, um, you should be quickly building up to that. Because like I talk about on my channel a lot, there's this thing about holding the reader's attention that I like to call the five minute rule. And basically it's revealing the character's desires and fears. And if you can, their misbelief within the first five minutes of your story. And I know that sounds like kind of daunting at first, but it's pretty, it's pretty easy when you get down to figuring out, okay, how can I show what they want and show their deeper longing, their deeper crisis inside based on what they want, based on some of their reservations, some of the obstacles, some of the, way, the ways that they perceive those obstacles and those desires. I have a tongue, I have a tongue. Though yours explains well enough why I may not marry your son, my greatest misfortune would be to marry into a family who would carry me as their shame. And all of this can be very evident through just a small turn of events, like Kate was saying. Papa did not trust I could achieve a match that would raise my rank or even equal it. You are above reducing yourself for the sake of rank. Kind of an example of this that's immediately springing to mind because this story has been on my mind so much lately, of course is my new book, The Other World, um, which is coming out September 19th. I'm so excited to share this book with you guys. The, the first line of the blurb, Orca Monroe wants only one thing for her 18th birthday, to experience the other world, the mysterious mainland across the sea that her father has forbidden her from visiting. So like, boom, right away in one sentence, I've set up the internal conflict, okay? She wants to experience what she calls the other world, which is just the mainland that she's never been able to visit because she's lived on this island her whole life and her father has forbidden her from visiting it. Now, as you read deeper into the blurb and the story in chapter one, you'll find that those obstacles in her path that are preventing her from visiting the other world aren't just based on her father forbidding it, they're also based on her own reservations and fears and misbeliefs of how she thinks her father believes her to be weak or incapable of handling the real world. So there's a lot of different layers to her internal conflict, but basically you could break it down into those two simple things. She wants to see the world, her father's forbidden it, and she's afraid of disappointing her father and also afraid of this false belief that she's not capable of handling the real world. External events can be the hook, but internal conflict is the punch. Okay, so while an external event could be the hook for your story, like it could set the story in motion, it's important to show the reader why it matters to the characters. So you can think of it as like, the plot is the fist and the internal conflict is the punch, is how I always like to say it. Cause it's like, yes, you need the fist in order to deliver the punch, but the fist by itself is not punchy. Yes, you can use those external events to sort of trigger something, but there has to be something already there. 
you know? And I feel like you did a really great job of this in the Blood Race, in the first book of the Blood Race series, where we have Ion, who's already a very conflicted character. Right. And that that opening hook of he's, he's in this car race scenario with a nemesis of his, and then when he's going home, he accidentally hits his neighbor's car. And that like kind of turns into this spiral of events that he then has to go talk to the neighbor and the neighbor ends up being Sensei who brings him into this whole new world. There's so much to the story, but it's it's like the, the door opens because of him hitting the car. Right. You know, like none of that could have happened if he didn't have a reason to talk to the neighbor. And we get to see a glimpse into how terrified he is of these powers that he feels like he can't control. He feels like it, his body is working against his will almost. Right. And then it ends with the inciting incidents, incident of him hitting Sensei's car. Right. Which brings us into like, the, that's the, we're starting down the rabbit hole now. A very small external event that then triggers this bigger door opening. That's exactly what I was saying of like, there's something already there. You know, there's already something at stake. There's already something in play. And then we have the inciting incident right. that forces them outside their comfort zone. But we've already, we've already established the boundaries of the comfort zone. And that's why the inciting incident then matters. It's not just a thing happening to anybody. It's something specifically meaningful because of what this character is already internally dealing with. So ask yourself, how can you use the external events in the beginning of your book to bring the internal conflict to the forefront and to really challenge that internal conflict? And how does this particular conflict shove your character outside their comfort zone? I think it's important to develop characters before you even develop your plot. You know, we should be really getting to know the characters more so than being acquainted with the plot. Because if you develop your characters before you plunge them into the plot, it allows your reader to empathize with them better and to really care about who they are and what they care about and see what matters to them. I promise I will never let anything happen to you, Nemo. And that changes what comes next because now what comes next matters more to us because we see why it matters to them. I can now put myself in their shoes and feel what they're feeling. Wouldn't you prefer to eat when all the work is done, Ella? Or should I say Cinderella? <laughs> what motivates your character? That's another question to contemplate. And what experiences in their past have shaped their personality and their fears and their goals? So as you develop your story, ask yourself these questions to ensure that you are creating compelling internal conflict and that you're driving home that punch in your opening hook. What does my protagonist think will bring them true happiness or contentment? How is their fear stopping them from going after it? What is my character's misbelief and what happened in their past to create this misbelief? How can I show my audience in the first five minutes why what's happening matters to my protagonist given their desire, fear, and misbelief? And of course it will be different for everyone. Some hooks might be backstory, some might be flashbacks to the past or showing your character growing up or showing just that pivotal moment in their past, even if it wasn't that long ago, where something changed for them their fatal flaw took root, their misbelief took root, um, and it now has changed the course of their life. So maybe it's something like that, or maybe it's just meeting them in the present day and they are being forced outside their comfort zone in some way. Or maybe it's something that is an external event that sets off a bigger challenge and opens the door to a whole new world of conflict. So lots of different ways to look at that and lots of different ideas to play with. Internal conflict is a central aspect of a story that pits a character's desires against their fears. Okay, that's basically it. It's, it's pretty simple. External conflict can be the hook, but internal conflict is the punch that makes the story truly compelling. It's essential to develop your characters before plunging them into the plot. Comment below and join the discussion because we would love to hear from you guys. We'd love to hear what you thought of this episode and what are some of your favorite examples of an opening hook. Mm. That that would be something to one. comment below. Maybe even one of them is my new book, The Other World, yeah. <laughs> which I'm a big fan of the opening hook in the first chapter and just 
this entire book. I'm super, super happy and excited to be sharing it with you guys. And it's coming out this September, September 19th. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time, stay stoked and rock on.